Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gears Tactics. My name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our blind playthrough of uh, the insane difficulty run. It is time for Act 2, Chapter 6, the last kind of uh, optional mission. And we're going to go into Hidden Sword, which is a difficult mission that also could give us quite a bit of extra loot. Enemies in cover do and that are not flanked gain plus 200% evasion, meaning they are almost impossible to be hit. I got, uh, well, I prepared a little something for you. Number one, I reskilled Mercilla Spectre uh, to find something fun because I couldn't find an assassination scout. I just figured, you know what? I mean, she's level six and she has done such a great service to us. Might as well use her. And this time I want to uh, try out how assassination works. So it's a lot of hiding, essentially getting damage bonus whilst being hidden. But I felt, you know, having that proximity mine and the frag mastery just on top of it, there is no reason to not lightly go into that. Just having some extra grenades for, um, for defense. We got the finisher, which goes all the way down to a three cooldown um, ability and that means we're going to get an automatic crit against wounded targets and funnily enough the moment that you uh, kill an enemy with an execution or critical hit you regain your um, invisibility your hidden status so that's fantastic that's kind of the mechanic that we're going to use uh, regain that over and over uh, whilst essentially cleaning up the battlefield we're being joined by Widowmaker. You've seen him in a previous run. Essentially, he's uh, the intimidate, uh, demoralize type of uh, breacher um, vanguard that we have seen. Now, I still want to uh, check out how well that is going. I've um, uh, purchased a new heavy for us, who is going to be very different to what we've seen so far. Essentially, we're uh, going to go into a purely shot based build and we so far have only seen kind of a half half hearted attempt to go to ultra shot and then that was that here in the artillery uh, variant but this time i figured you know what let's combine that passive streak with the ultra shot uh, situation to just gain additional action points essentially he has the heat mechanic that you are um, that you already know from the previous runs together with reckless shots and then essentially ultra shot but also a uh, passive reduction of skill cooldowns when we're reloading as well as the streak mechanic so after five shots he's automatically gaining an ap and any form of partial shot uh, the fury one here that's actually a really good ability any form of partial shot allows you to take a shot again uh, together with redeploy and the the five anchors that we do have it should be a decent build i would say it's definitely not an overwatch build the quite the opposite it has nothing to do with overwatch and i gave him all of the nice add-ons for the mulcher weapon here which we wouldn't have on an overwatch heavy so all of the crit and and extra trigger effects for multi-shot and then mojo here is going to help help us uh, with the typical support uh, abilities and that's really it we are rushing into the mission hopefully i can get all of the crates out good news we've tracked down some equipment bad news the grubs have the area targeted for bombardment hurry and grab those crates Okie dokie, let's jump into the mission. Good, we're being targeted from behind as always. We gotta Nemesis run and we gotta run to fast. Gotta get at least three of the equipment cases. One, two three two down here i think we've played that map already i vaguely remember a similar map uh, where we fought quite a few on that ledge but it was a bit different to the one that had been generated for us here scout here
Let's use Jack to pick this one up. Very good. First case is ours. That was an easy one. Now the rest is likely not going to be that easy. Moving up. Time for a sprint. Moving. Ready. And we can try to rush as far as we can. Yeah. Jake's moving up as well. And our heavy as always is potentially the slowest one in the bunch. Couple of wretches, a grenadier, and what appears to be Athenian guard. I think that's what they were called. Stay out of the blast zone. Scout on standby. Good time to deal with those two and get the guy out of cover nice. moving moving up Let's give our main damage dealer something to deal with. Order shot. Um, yep, let's get this guy down. And afterwards, we're reloading. Partial hit. City connect. Did a reload. Oh, we're poisoned. Okay, fair enough. Well, that means we're not going to deal a lot of damage. But there is still a decent chance for crit, so. Can we... Eh, we can't. But we can effectively move up to here. And at least... Use Sniper Aura. Good. Improve critical chance. This here is a 100% chance. Here we go. But shot based yeah, build isn't bad either. You gotta admit it's actually quite good. Are you kidding me? Alright, let's try this again. Fantastic. So that puts us onto hidden. Go ahead. Moving to position. And we're picking up a couple of further crates. Good. We haven't lost any momentum so far, so good. Bring it on, grubs. Scout on standby.
Understood. Scout begins to rush in. And with that, we already have three crates, thanks to our really, really, really fast scout. Okay. Good. Moving as far as we can. Jack moves yep. up. This is almost reckless charging that I'm doing here. Should have redeployed. Uh, my bad. Dig in. We got incoming. Interesting setup. We're pretty far ahead of the curve, but yeah, two more rounds and that might change in a moment's notice. So that's almost a no-brainer. That interruption here is a no-brainer as well. Support ready. And the support hides. Fair enough. You got it. All right, moving up. Jack moves up here. Gives everybody an extra action. Nice. We are heating up and reloading for extra damage. And let's kill this guy. <laughs> Holy moly. Spread out. Drop terminate. I read you. You got it. Good, moving down. We still got a, theoretically a, another grenade. I missed. Okay, which we may yep. be forced to use. All right, moving up. Wow. Fantastic damage as always. Hey. Hey to do it because it's a bit wasteful. Drag out. Target is down. I'm listening. Taking position. Good. And Jack begins to move down as well. No turn shall be wasted here. here we go. I was about to speculate whether or not enemies can't spawn right after one another. Apparently that's the case. They can spawn uh, two turns in a row. Support here. It. 
Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Taking position. All right, moving down. Rip them apart. No mercy. Good. Let's get some teamwork going. We're going to get you the actions this. back. Could reload, mm, potentially not the right play. Instead, extra cooldown reduction is the name of the game. That's two for two. Almost out. Scratch one grub. Okay, we got two of the disciples okay. back there. That will mark her uh, to become invisible. There we go. Execution and with execution. We do have extra turns. So far, this actually plays out really nicely. Quick and painful. Specifically, the point where we are just charging in like absolute lunatics and are still going to survive it. Okay. Roger that. I see the objective. On the move. I really appreciate how this has played out. That shot build of the heavy isn't bad at all. I still think that the Overwatch is a bit better, but for those missions here, holy shit, that's a lot of damage. Good. Support. Awaiting orders. Just out of curiosity. Taking position. Moving to here. Then charging all the way to here. And then Support getting ready. into the ring. Reporting in. All right, the heavy by far is the slowest unit. Good, let's give him some Overwatch options. Bring it on, I'm ready. No clue if they are going to land right next to us, who knows. 
But we're pretty far ahead of the curve. I mean, look at that. That's three more rounds. Vanguard on standby. Wilco. Scout reporting in. Frag out. That sweet, sweet Your extra history. hit. Heavy here. Ten percent shot, but I mean, we can at least give it a try. Well, we didn't have any ammunition left. Okay, never mind. Well, that was a pretty damn good mission. And we got five of the crates on top of it. Good. Time to equip our A team because I think we still got a couple of upgrades. And maybe, maybe just maybe Jack is level six as well. I don't think that we actually need anything else, but if I recall correctly, he had a few auras. That we haven't had yet. Yeah, never mind. I don't think he's going to reach level 6 ever. Ooh, plus 3 ammo. That is good. And plus 10% accuracy. Cool. Good. Let's start with a few things, shall we? What's his current equipped helmet? Harden. 15 maximum health, that's good. I like it. We got Disrupt. Which is the best thing that we could have. There is actually no better option here. This is still tempting, but going from seven ammunition to two. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Got the epic stim grenade. Got the good pistol, helmet. And boots are the glory boots. No, Diaz is really well equipped. Blood liner, fantastic. The accuracy bonus is not too bad, 13%, but the flatliner bonus is just too good to not use it. Anticipation is, well, 100% crit damage. You're making a difficult uh, choice here. That's 10% flat damage reduction. And the moment that we kill someone with flatliner, essentially, the, every single next shot uh, will be a crit, and if we're dealing plus 100% crit damage, hmm, that's actually some really nasty damage. We're still sticking with Disrupt, though. He's taking the pistol because he's in the prime team. So we got hardened here, 10% maximum health. <clears throat> but advanced optics would potentially be a better choice for another 30% critical damage. The other option is getting more hit points. I think we're fine because he already has that much health. 
and critical hit point resistance and heavy weight for another damage reduction we're over a hundred percent damage reduction at this point Plus 230% crit damage. That's not bad. 590 health as opposed to... 13 more health and hardened. But that would reduce evasion. And evasion isn't bad either because it makes us harder to be hit. Let's stick with that for now. 50% crit damage, that's good. 10% crit chance is fantastic. I like the ammunition. I don't want to go back to lower ammunition. If we put another higher crit chance here, we would be at 100% crit chance. What does this bowl do? Overwood shots? And we're reloading during Overwatch. It has its um, it has it has its benefits to to have extra damage on Overwatch. However, that ten percent flat crit chance that's pretty damn good because we're almost always critting. Then accuracy bonus, yes. And yeah, we would be keeping that extra damage here as well we got optics so 10 percent crit chance yes we got all out here i think that's the right call shots and cover gain seven percent accuracy might be something for the heavy And we got magazine extension, and that's already the best we could get. Now we're taking disrupt, that's good. Damage, accuracy, and damage. Yep, that is perfect. Blast zone is perfect. Grenadier is already perfect. And we're looking at utility belt. No. Rhea is really well equipped. I think here we can upgrade a bit. Optics. 7% extra uh, crit chance. So that would be good. 10% accuracy. That is really good. We're keeping it. Double down. Yes, please. Hair trigger versus three ammunition. <laughs> well, three ammunition is good. I like it. Is five enough or do we need to get all the way up to eight ammunition? I mean, for something like ultra shot, eight ammunition would be awesome because you just keep on going, 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 going. I am wondering if we need more than 5 ammunition. On the flip side, we would n almost never need to reload, right? The hair trigger, though, gives a really decent chance for a second shot. 5 ammunition is still good. I think we're keeping it as is. I think we're keeping it as is. Which kind of brings us back to here. Crit chance, optics, what else do we have here? 30% critical hit damage. He already has crit chances, so that's fine. The hardened is an option, but I don't really think that he needs extra hit points at this point. Yeah, we got the right helmet here and the right helmet here. Can't believe that we've equipped everyone 
with an epic helmet or above. That's pretty damn good. So, all in all, I think our equipment is fine. We're now going to Vantage Point, which is another legendary weapon mod, and uh, it's only Gabe and Rhea this time, so that'll be fun, but that's happening next turn. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to leave a comment and a like down below, and see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.